industry tips for software testers. We're going through interview tips today. We've previously gone through how to build an online profile through your resume or LinkedIn, how the job application process is broken, and how networking is key. But today I'm focusing on interviewing. Interviewing is a performance. You are getting up on stage and putting your best foot forward. The only way you will get better at interviewing is practicing. Now, you don't have to line up a whole bunch of interviews to practice. You can do what I'm doing right now, recording yourself, have an interview with yourself, or have an interview with a colleague or someone you trust, record the session and watch the playback and see where you can improve. One of the best ways to improve your public speaking skills is to record yourself. You'll soon pick up on all the awkward ums and ahs if you watch yourself. You'll also know where your nervousness comes out. I was speaking to a friend about public speaking before and she said whenever she got up on stage, her nervousness would come out with her standing on one leg. Now, she didn't realize she was doing this until she watched a video of her speaking at a conference. Now, how embarrassing would that be to be professionally speaking for a couple of years, only to realize you stood on one leg when you were nervous? I mean, like, talk about uh, awkward to, to watch or to realize only when you watch. So I'm going over to my uh, browser here, and I'm going to go through a couple of tips. Uh, the performance. Um, if there's a whiteboard, draw a mind map and ask questions that matter to you. The first point I have here is the, the, the warm-up question. Tell me a bit about yourself. Now you should practice, even if it's just in a mirror, having this conversation with yourself. You don't want to get to the interview and go, uh, uh, I'm a software tester with eight years experience. Um, I really want this job. I like automation. No, you want to practice this. You want to nail this. This is your 30 second elevator pitch about yourself and people will judge you very quickly in just this one sentence or this, this introduction question to figure out if they would like to work with you or not. So if I'm introducing myself, I say, my name's Sam. I've been a software tester for eight years. Uh, my expertise is in mobile app testing. I'm currently on a superannuation and investment app. It's pretty super. Ha. Uh, I've previously worked for a wide variety of companies. When I first moved to Sydney, I was working on the Opal card, uh, the public transport card that you use when you get on and off the bus. Uh, then I moved to Tyro and I got to experience Tyro's rapid growth. I was the eighth tester hired. I saw the team grow to 23. I also saw that company achieve its banking license, which was a huge achievement. Uh, I've also been a contractor on Google. I worked on a small app called Google Maps. Maybe you've ever, never heard of it. I like to have some jokes and some getting warming things when I introduce myself. But I practice getting up on stage a fair bit. So uh, this type of conversation is not really nerve wracking to me. I can uh, have this conversation with myself. It did take me 10 or 15 minutes worth of trial and error to <laughs> Uh, to get started with this conversation. You don't want to see my bloopers reel. But you should have like a really good, succinct, tell me a bit about yourself that uh, doesn't show your nerves, that's, that's comfortable. You've had this conversation before. It's like you could read it off the back of your hand. Um, it's nothing you should get caught up about. Um, too often, uh, people get really nervous during the interview process and and they just don't nail this first question and if you don't nail this first question people are, aren't likely to judge you in the best of light they're going to look for excuses to not hire you because you've given them a poor first impression when i'm interviewing other testers uh, i like to draw up on a whiteboard this this field uh, username and password with a submit button and i like to ask testers how would you test this now, the key with interview questions is the interviewer is always looking for a particular answer. So when I think of people who answer this question, I have about three ratings. I have the gold star rating, I have a, yeah, that was okay rating, and a, 
I don't want to work with you, you don't know how to talk about testing type of rating. So I'm going to walk you through what would be my gold star rating for this question. So a lot of people would uh, go straight into functionality. Uh, how many incorrect passwords can I do? Is the username an email? Uh, valid email? What if the user doesn't exist? Um, is there a reset password? So eventually, once someone started uh, gotten through the, the the test case or the test scenarios that would they would possibly test from a functionality point of view, um, what I'm looking for is then they might start branching off into other areas, and they would get an automatic gold star from me if they started mind mapping their solution. So say they they're thinking about this username and password field, but then they also brainstorm some some stuff from a security point of view or a performance or maybe a privacy point of view or from an accessibility point of view. They can uh, look at all these different elements of quality and start brainstorming different test scenarios. But the ultimate answer is if they get to context leading questions. If they get to the point of going, hey, hang on for a minute, um, I'm not going to rush into testing this. I need to understand uh, more about this field. What type of website is it being put on? Is it just a startup or is it a finance company? Um, how how much has the rework been recently? Is this a username and password field that's existed in production for five years and has always been working? Then they don't need to do as much testing. Uh, what's changed recently? Are we using third-party authentication systems? If you're using third-party authentication systems, you don't need to test as much. So ultimately, with these type of how would you test these questions, uh, getting to the context leading questions will help demonstrate that you can think critically about testing and communicate that. Drawing a little mind map and some diagrams as well will also help you show that you know how to communicate, think through your problems and ask more context revealing questions. Um, another mind map, I've got a blog post on using mind maps and heuristics for testing. Um, and there's a bunch of different examples I've got here, and I'll include the link later. Um, but another mind map I was using, like at that uh, previous company I mentioned at Tyro, uh, was I drew this mind map for our mobile app. And I would bring this, I'd actually printed this mind map and would bring it along to our planning sessions so that if we were doing a session of planning, I could go, what about what, how much automation do we want to build for this feature? Do we have to consider performance? Or how can we use some different exploratory test methods when we're building out this feature? Uh, do we have to consider backwards compatibility? Um, or do we have to update our threat model in our security uh, back at, uh, backlog to, to accommodate this new feature? Um, so I found having this mind map uh, and bringing it along to our planning sessions really useful. You can say, I don't know, but you have to follow this up with something else. I often have people ask me about a technology that I'm not too familiar with, or I haven't quite heard it before. And it's fine to say, oh, that I'm not too familiar with that technology, but can you explain that in a, uh, with a bit more explanation? Or is this like that other technology that I've used before? You need to follow up this question. Don't be afraid of saying, I don't know. Um, or you could say, I don't know, I haven't experienced that in the past before, but that sounds like a really interesting problem. I'd like to do a bit more research and get back to you for, before I have an answer for that one. Um, there are ways you can say, I don't know, but you need to follow it up. And um, it's fine to not know. You are nervous. This is that you are on stage doing a performance and it's fine if your brain just completely blanks in the moment. This happens to everyone but you have to be careful with this also if you start faking an answer if you start just talking because they've asked you a question that your interviewer is going to know when you are talking out of your ass so I would say don't fake an answer be comfortable with saying I don't know but I'd love to follow up you can also make sure you always have some questions prepared and make sure they matter to you as well um, never get to the end of the interview and if they say, do you have any questions, go, no, I'd like this job, please. Um, have something prepared. If So, for example, when I get to the end of the interview, I have one question that I always ask and that's, um, 
I like to blog about my struggles with mental health, so being open about this stuff is important to me. How would you support a colleague going through a tough time? And caveat, I don't expect managers to actually answer this question really well. Generally, what I'm looking for is like, oh, we have some sort of employee access program where people can access uh, uh, support if they need it. Um, but if that situation came up, we'd have like an open discussion with how management can support you and 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 whatnot. Also, I like to ask, like, when was the last time your team celebrated diversity? So instead of asking, is diversity important? Because obviously it is. Ask for concrete examples. Um, generally, what I'm looking for is maybe they celebrated Diwali recently, uh, or there was some other food festival or some other diversity initiative that happened and that everyone got involved. If it was a Pride Day or, or whatnot, I'm looking for the last time they celebrated uh, something in their team. If you're a, a return to work mother, you might not be uh, wanting to be too open about your status, but maybe work-life balance is important to you. You could ask, you know, what have been your challenges accommodating uh, remote workers during this pandemic? Um, and you could probably gauge uh, what their maturity is for, for remote work or flexible work. Um, so you need to come prepared with at least some questions. And sometimes it can be a bit diplomatic. You don't want to give away stuff that would bias the interviewer against you. And I'm fully aware of that. But I think it's also important to try and ask those questions of things that um, uh, are a concern for you. So to sum up, those are my interview tips. You need to practice. Um, so many people can't have a decent conversation when they're put on the spot. Uh, if you just start that conversation on a good note, you're more likely to have a better successful interview. And I would suggest all testers practice some mind mapping techniques as well, because it will make your communication skills look like a boss. Thank you.